Hello, uh, nice to be here. Uh, I'm going to try and give you a snapshot of Spago Nanomedical, and uh, soon after that it will be coffee again, so bear with me, please. <laughs> Spago Nanomedical develops new pharmaceuticals with a special focus on radiopharma <coughs> excuse me, and medical imaging. We do this based on a proprietary technology platform that has been designed for use in cancer medicine, both for imaging and for pharma use. And the core of our expertise is around this, this, uh, this technology platform, meaning that we are coming from the imaging side with the vision of improving the precision in medical imaging. Going from there into radiopharmaceuticals, where we want to improve the use of radiopharmaceutical and expand the use of, of that modality, which we all know is very effective in treating cancer. It's a very vibrant field right now, and I will come back a little bit about, about that. So uh, we started out not as a pharmaceutical with the pharmaceutical focus, but with an imaging focus, which, which perhaps makes us a bit different compared to others in the sector. That has also led us to this proprietary material that we now know uh, works in humans in the way that it accumulates selectively in cancer tumors. We have shown that with our imaging program in patients with breast, breast cancer. So the natural step from, from there, and this has not been an easy route, but now we are there and we are a very uh, strong, I would say, IP position when it comes to, to the radiopharmaceutical side and the imaging side. But it has led us into radiopharmaceuticals, and I will explain a little bit more about that. So this is a very rapidly growing field right now. And why, you ask? Well, of course, everybody knows, and it's been known for a very long time, that radioactivity effectively kills cancer cells. They divide rapidly, and they are sensitive to breaks in DNA strands uh, for them to replicate. So with radioactivity, you can effectively slow down the growth of cancer tumors. This has been known for 100 years. What is new to this field is the ability to take radioactivity in a selective way to the tumors within the body. This is now what we are seeing happening in, in multiple cases and, and with big pharma companies leading the way. So what sets us apart from the, from the growing pipeline? Well, again, we're coming from the imaging side. We developed a material, a platform material, a polymeric material that binds metal ions in a very effective way. This we can use to transport radioisotopes to the tumors within the body in a selective way. So our candidate drug, lutetium 177 SN21, will come up with a better name as time goes by, but right now that's what we call it. <clears throat> is now in clinical trial, and what it does, it provides the opportunity to treat several different types of cancers with this effective modality. So where are we? Well, we started a, the first clinical trial uh, with, uh, with the, within the tumor ad program uh, uh, at the end of last year. Uh, it's a phase one slash 2A trial. Uh, it progresses well. We recently announced uh, the outcome of, of the first full DMC evaluation of the first patient co cohort. Uh, it looks good. We are now progressing into diff di patients with uh, different types of tumors. The objective in this first part of the trial, as always in first of human trials, is to study safety. What we can do also, since this is a radioactive drug, is to try and trace it throughout the body to see how much goes to the tumor and how much goes to other organs in order to try and decide, do we have the right balance here between efficacy and, and safety? Is there a chance for a positive uh, treatment balance with, within uh, this first trial. And then, of course, we want to proceed with the phase two to go into specific groups of cancer patients and, and look for efficacy. 
The study is being conducted in Australia, uh, and I must say it's been a pleasure to, to conduct a, a trial there, at least so far. It's been working very well. We set up a, a subsidiary there, so all the costs for the trial goes through that, and we get a cash back of 43% of the, of the tax, uh, which makes it a very cost-effective way to, to run a trial. They are well known, uh, well acquainted with Radio Pharma uh, agents from before. The sites are very responsive and so on. So I must say the, st the study is really proceeding well right now. So with that, the, the, the recent highlights, and coming back to that again, we, we just got green light from the Data Monitoring Committee to proceed the trial based on the first patient cohort. We also had preclinical data coming out earlier this year, which really s provides further support. We, we have had preclinical data before from a, a colorectal cancer model, and now we also got it from a triple negative breast cancer model, and, and it looks good. I mean, we, we have a drug that can really go to the tumors and make a positive treatment effect. We strengthened our patent position dramatically. Uh, we now have four major families, patent families, uh, uh, going into national phase, and we expect to have patent protection at least until at least 2042 for this program. So all in all, I would say this year and, and the end of last year, we have really trans transformed as a company from going from being very focused on this early discovery, doing lots of work on that and taking us all the way into clinics with our two uh, development programs, one in imaging and one in therapy, which I think is quite an achievement for, for a small Swedish biotech. So what this means eventually is we, we, now, we are now in a position where we are truly a clinical stage company. We are working in a field where we are standing out uh, lutetium 177 SN21 is different to uh, much of the other pipeline products out there. We have the opportunity to expand the use of Radio Pharma into different kinds of tumors. And uh, I should say also that I received notice actually earlier today that uh, Sanofi bought Radiomedics and Oranomed for 110 million US upfront. Uh, that just shows that the activity in this field right now from Big Pharma is really, really high. I should mention the imaging uh, project as well, Spaga Picks, where we are not doing so much right now. We, that is more or less parked, but we have a very nice uh, package that we are able to to sell to potential partners and to specialist investors. Specifically, I would say from a personal point of view, I think it's very interesting if you look to endometriosis where there is significant medical need. Uh, so all in all, Spargo Nanomedical are set for near-term value inflections. We have readouts coming out early next year, again in the phase one. Uh, we expect to conclude that trial by the end of next year and go into phase 2A in specific groups of cancer, and we'll come back on that ex exactly which and how the way to market will look like. So with that, uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. So can tumorod be considered a personalized therapy? Well, in the way that it can be monitored by imaging, uh, whether the tumors do take up this radioactive substance or not. So, so yes, in that sense, it depends a little bit what you mean with personalized, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not the asker in this one, so I can't know. But let's go to the next one. Are you considering using alpha radiation options? That's an interesting question. Uh, the field right now is... is I think a bit divided. The, some of the big companies are going for beta radiators, which is the one we are using, lutetium mainly, and others are going for alpha. Uh, I think what we see right now is that the, the beta radiators are proving themselves in the real world. They are used in patients. Alpha is a bit behind. <clears throat> the question, can we use alpha? We probably can. 
Will we? Well, we'll see. <laughs> I think it depends very much uh, on, on where the field is, is going. Right now, we are very, as you can imagine, being a small Swedish company, we are very much focusing on what we have at hand. But I think it, there are interesting opportunities with Alpha. Mm, okay, so let me get a little bit more concrete. What do you think needs to happen in order for you to actually go with that option? Well, first of all, investments, of course, and, and perhaps partnerships. But, but we, we do believe that we have a platform material. We, we know that we can, very, we can bind these types of isop isotopes very well. So it's just a matter of developing the, te the, the platform in that direction. Mm. But that takes resources, of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, you recently recruited a new head of CMC and supply. Why? Because we, we, as I said before, we are now, now at the stage where we are coming from early discovery, where we've been for a long time. We are now truly a clinical phase company, which needs to be reflected in the management team in the way that we need to bring in regulatory competence. We need to look forward to bigger production rounds and, and uh, partner discussions around uh, setting up production globally and supply chain uh, for radio pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions in the room? No, in that case, I think let's just have coffee. And Excellent. thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.